I got some more propane. Let's melt some stuff. Here's the deal. Furnace is built, got more propane. I still have all that copper that I want to melt. So we're going to try to make that happen today. And then next time, I'm going to try alloying it. I'm going to use the copper, mix it with aluminum to make aluminum bronze. That's the goal. Let's see how we're going to do it. Here it is. Here's the new furnace. Here's the lid. Here's a crucible. I have it up on a plinth. This thing, this is not coated in satanite. We're going to see how well that holds up. It'll probably be fine, but it also acts as a plinth to raise this up. Now remember, this lid has an, kind of an, an arch thing, so there'll be plenty of space for the, the flames to escape. Burner, same as last time. I'm going to pour it into there. Little pucks. That's rusty to prevent them from brazing on. This is sitting on a thing. So when I take it out and set it down, it won't be setting on the concrete. You don't want the hot stuff directly touching the concrete. Bucket of copper, quenching bucket. This is already pre-stuffed with copper. It's also full of crap in the bottom that's solidified. And I put in some charcoal. The theory here is air will get in there and oxidize the charcoal before it does a lot of damage to your copper. I uh, don't know if that'll work, but we'll see. Pretty sure the burner runs rich anyway, but you know, better safe than sorry. There, safetyed up. I think I'm gonna use I think I'm gonna use matches from now on. I kinda like matches. Don't know if I like that match. That one was broke. Don't think it's enough fire. Never mind, I don't like matches better. Good. And let the games begin. Now that's heating up. I should mention I have melted copper before. Here's a chunk of it. Uh, but copper it's not super easy to melt, especially my last furnace was basically a concrete bucket. Great standing up to heat, but really not all that insulating. The new furnace is very insulating, uh, but it's also a little bigger and it kind of requires more energy to heat up a larger furnace. So we'll see how that works. Uh, I was able to melt this before with charcoal. That last furnace that I built, it is kind of more designed for charcoal. It was bigger, thinner wall designed to hold in the charcoal. Charcoal is sort of insulating on its own. So it, that's, that's how I was able to melt these. So I have been able to do it. The thing is, I haven't been able to do it easily and reliably. I want to be able to melt copper scrap down an ingot smaller than this, probably a little smaller, and this is a little too big. I want to be able to do it reliably and quickly so I can get a lot of it melted without having to worry about it, so I can alloy it. You can do a lot with copper for alloys. Brass is mostly copper. All different kinds of bronzes are mostly copper. You can look up all the percentages for how much goes into what. Uh, but what I'm going to try to do is aluminum bronze. You mix in pure aluminum. A good way to get that is from like aluminum extrusions. Cast aluminum is not pure. It has a lot of silicon in it. Uh, but if you mix a lot of silicon with copper, you get silicon bronze. And I'm going to try doing that too, but not right away. I want to practice with like cheap, simple stuff like aluminum extrusions. And each one of these bronzes has different characteristics, which I'll talk about probably when I go to make them and why I'm using which kind of alloy for which. But they're really cool. Uh, copper, copper itself, just copper alone, kind of a lame casting metal, but you can do so much with it. Uh, fun fact though, denser than steel, very heavy, soft though, but you can forge it. Maybe I'll forge some copper. Off topic, tangent, not going to do it today. Today we're going to melt it. Whoa, already starting to turn red. That's cool. Getting awfully toasty in there already. Hasn't even been that long. Standing back a ways now and zooming in because it's a lot louder. And that's partly because I drilled that hole bigger so I could fit the flare in there, which kind of makes it a little more stable, especially until it warms up. And that means I can crank the regulator all the way to max. And you get a lot more power without it sucking back into the, into the tube or blowing itself out in there. Also, that hole is a little bigger, so you don't... I, I thought the other hole was too small, so it kind of constrict the airflow escaping, uh, which would kind of cause it to stagnate in the tube and maybe start burning there. That's a theory anyway. But whatever it is, this furnace insulates better, and I can crank the burner even higher. So, uh, double win. So while that's rapidly heating up, I want to mention some places you can get stuff to alloy with the copper. Copper is not difficult to find. The alloying ingredients, however, not as easy. Manganese chips, I got those from a guy. Uh, silicon, pure silicon, you basically can't get. But if you look up silicon on eBay, I found some cases where you can get like a tube of it. It's very expensive per pound though. I got that from the same very helpful guy whose name I will not reveal because he never told me I could. Never asked either. I should probably get in contact with him again. And silicon can make silicon bronze. It can make 
a bunch of different versions of silicon bronze. So you, you can look that up. Tin is the other common way to do it, like 80, 90% copper, the rest tin, or more tin. Uh, that's like old fashioned tin bronze. Like when you're bronze age, it's usually tin, copper and tin. A good place to get tin is actually lead free solder. Lead free solder, like for pipes and, and stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of solder though, so make sure you can get one that says it's like 99% tin. But some of them contain lead, some of them contain silver. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things, but some of them, some of them are mostly tin. There's also a place online, which I will link down below if I forget, yell at me, that you can buy tin ingots. Another common thing to add into copper is zinc. Zinc, you find zinc everywhere. I talked all about that. Die casts are zinc. Also, zinc ingots are at the same link. Check that out. Zinc is cheap though. And zinc mixed with copper generally makes brass. There's a bunch of kinds of brass though. Yellow brass, naval brass, red brass, many other kinds of brass that don't fall into one of the color names that I've mentioned. And, uh, and those, those are kind of interesting, although you can just get brass brass, you know. But just don't mix yellow brass and red brass. Yellow brass is like ornamental numbers and stuff. When you see a brass metal, it's usually yellow brass. That's a lot of zinc in the copper. Red brass is like plumbing. That's not a lot of zinc, like 5% zinc. Uh, there's, there's different alloys of that, though, depending on lead-free brass. Anyway, I'm rambling about brass, aren't I? I'm not going to make brass. Screw brass. I'm going to make bronze, because for some reason, I feel like that word is better, even though brass is perfectly fine. The first one I'm going to do is aluminum bronze, and I'm going to alloy it with one of these. This one, pure aluminum, mostly. It's from cans. Cans and extrusions give you pure aluminum. This is cast aluminum. This is from aluminum that was cast. It contains a lot of silicon. Might not show up on camera, but the pure one is a lot brighter in color. I don't know why. Also, for some reason, the pure one on the right, we get these cool crystals and a lot more shrinkage. Because of the crystals and the shrinkage, pure aluminum, not very good to cast with. Uh, but it is good to alloy with because cast aluminum can hit silicon. I don't want silicon in my aluminum bronze because then it's not aluminum bronze, or it might be. I don't know. I'm not an expert of alloys. You're still listening to me? What's wrong with you? Okay, people, as you can guess, I've been moving like crazy, putting in more copper, but got a problem. My tank is freezing and I'm running out of pressure, so I'm gonna have to move really quickly. My crucible isn't full, but it is pretty full. So here we're gonna go. Lift the top off. Gonna keep this going. Ooh, there's a lot of crummy dross on there. Crummy, crummy fire. There's a lot of junk in this crucible. I don't know what was underneath all the copper. Sure doesn't look good. And now really quickly, the pour. Rimp. There we go. Look at that. Check that out, people. That is molten copper. Well, I think that's all we got. Yeah, just, just slag and crap. Cool. All right. I dropped some metal in there. Check it out, huh? Still glowing. Glowing, but they're solidified. I'm just gonna dump all of them and all the crap and stuff in the bucket. And this too. So what I'm doing here, everything in there, the crucible is still really hot, like 1500 degrees. If it cools too quickly, it can crack. So I put the lid on so it cools slowly and block the airflow. Cool, huh? There's a lot of rust in the pan. I think that's what rose here and gave it the rust color. Now, there's also a bunch of other crap in the crucible, so this probably isn't the purest copper. But, eh, it's fine. Ta-da! Here they are! Now this is this one from before. But check it out. They look kind of gross. There's a lot of gross crud on that. Might be because the crucible was pretty dirty and the pan was pretty dirty. But I wire wheeled a couple of them. And there you go. Copper! Shiny, shiny copper. This is a piece of aluminum bronze I made earlier. Compare the color. So this is what happens when you take copper and add a little bit of aluminum. You get that gold. 
bling bling, huh? Aluminum bronze is almost as dense as copper. Copper is a little denser than steel. Aluminum bronze is still, I think, a little denser than steel. And it work hardens pretty good, but you know, if you don't put in too much aluminum, you don't make it too brittle, it won't shatter. It'll just be really, really ridiculously tough. So that's what I'm gonna plan to make a hammer out of. Now that I can melt this, I know I can melt this. I didn't even use forest air for this. I just used the burner on wide open. I did run into an issue that forced me to melt really quickly. The 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 tank started freezing. Tons of gas left, but it started freezing. So I'm gonna have to get like one of those big tubs full of warm water or something to prevent that. Maybe I'll try forest air next time to try to just speed up the melting. I don't know, try to get everything melting before the tank freezes. I don't know. Part of the issue was I got it up to temperature, it started melting, and then I just started adding in more and more and more copper, and that ended up taking a long time. So eventually the tank cooled down, cooled down, and started freezing. Problem, but not insurmountable. I got these melting, and that means all those other alloys, those are next, because this is the hardest part. Melting copper, all those copper alloys, they all melt colder than copper, and this is copper, and it's melted. Also, side note, if you're gonna be wire wheeling this like I did, or sanding it, respirator. Copper dust is not good for you. This stuff's so heavy, it's very heavy. This is a pound and a half. I heard about a pound and a half, two pounds is perfect for a smithing hammer. That's all the bigger this is. Whoops, you do not want this falling on your foot.